Thank you very much, Jenna. We're spending our morning at River City 4 with their service manager, Derek Walker. Derek, we're talking winterizing. What right. do you guys do when you're winterizing my car? Uh, some key things you'd want to get checked out is definitely your battery. So we've got a battery tester here. It's a simple process, hooking up to your negative and your positive terminals. And then it goes through a series of tests where we run, do a starter test, and it gives you a little printout. Which I have here, and the battery test, good. Right. We got a good printout on there. So what are some of the reasons why my battery might not be good? Is it, is it age? Is it use? It could be age, usage, uh, as well as if you do a lot of short trips, sometimes that can take its toll on a battery. So oh. maybe just go for a, a little bit of like a round trip to just boost that up. So give the alternator some time to charge up that battery. Gotcha, interesting stuff. Okay, so battery, uh, one area that we want to check out. Now we're, we're sort of heading to the lab because right. if we're checking uh, certain fluids here, you got a really cool way to do it. Right, yeah, the old method was like where you suck out some coolant and test it out. We actually use these, they're coolant test strips. It's kind of like uh, what you'd use for testing chlorine in a pool. Okay, cool, so uh, how does it work? Uh, we basically take a test strip, mm -hmm. go over to your coolant reservoir. All right. And the coolant, just for uh, people who may not be sure, that's uh, sort of like our, our antifreeze or... Uh... Right. Okay. Just dip it for a second. All right, so I see colors. Oh my gosh, are we going to be fathers? We are. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. Yay! Send the shower gifts to 8 Forks Market Road. So the uh, main one you want to look at is, the, is that color. Okay, the first good. Strip. So what does that mean? It means it's good? We're good. All right, 60%. All right, good stuff. That's pretty cool. I did not realize it was uh, so sophisticated. Like you said, it's just like uh, checking the chlorine in a pool. Correct. Uh, now, we are hoping it's going to be a nice mild winter. We'll breeze through it, no problem, but that's not going to happen. Uh, we're going to need to plug in our cars. We want to make sure that our block heater is working. So how do we uh, test that guy out? What we have is a block heater tester. Basically, this is our like a shop method. It's really simple, two-prong test. You plug it in into the tester. Nothing comes up yet, but you'll grab an extension cord that I've got here. Plug it in, block heater's good. Gotcha. So if it lights up, we know we're good. All right, good stuff. So that's so definitely something that we're gonna wanna make sure that we're taking care of. You so bet. That our, our car is plugged in and nice and toasty. And then uh, just quickly before we wrap things up, when we're thinking about running our cars and uh, warming them up before we go, is there is there a rule for like the, the upper limit on that? How long we should be running them, what the max is? I really wouldn't let it run longer than five to ten minutes just to just to get you going it's really a preference too to the driver whether or not they want a nice warm car when they get into gotcha. but as far as that the engine doesn't need much more than that okay so the yeah. engine actually is taking care of itself pretty quickly it's just a matter of uh, if you want to be sitting in a, in a warm cab or Toasty not. Car, okay. yeah. all right good to know some really great tips Derek thanks so much you're welcome all right uh, some really good lessons here as we've been hanging out at River City Ford getting a look at winterizing cars so far we've covered tires comparing the all seasons to the winters, talking tire pressure, and uh, had a little bit of a, a lesson underneath the hood. What do you guys think so far? I think it's great, and the more that you do for your car now, the longer it's gonna last you, and the safer you're gonna be all winter. And that's the thing. So if you're buying winter tires and stuff, you're, you're making a, a very worthwhile investment, but these things are expensive. You work hard for your money. So why not learn these little tricks, these little extra things that you can do to take better care of them, like checking your tire pressure, making sure they're inflated properly so that they don't wear out prematurely. It's just these really small things that you can do yourself. They're gonna add a lot of life to your vehicle and its parts and end up saving you money. Drew, did you say, or did the expert say there that the shorter trips you have, the harder it is on your car battery? Yeah, so what happens is your alternator recharges your battery as you're driving. Um, so if you're running like really short trips to like the grocery store or the place near your house, it's like maybe five minutes. That doesn't give your alternator enough time to charge your battery to what it was when you left your trip. So it'll keep on depleting and depleting and depleting. So uh, like Derek mentioned, if you go on a little bit of a longer drive, that will recharge your, uh, your battery and give your alternator enough time to bring it back up to par. Great. It's good things to keep in mind when we're out and about because uh, well, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Or a exactly. Of cure. Thanks, Drew. That's right, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's Sorry. true. It's true.